As the sun rose on another chaotic day at the office, Sarah sat at her desk staring at the never-ending to-do list. A frown creased her forehead as she tried to prioritize the tasks ahead. Suddenly, her phone rang, interrupting her thoughts. It was one of her biggest clients, demanding to know why their proposal was overdue. Sarah's heart sank as she tried to come up with an excuse. Just then, her inbox pinged with an angry email from a customer complaining about a faulty product. Sarah sighed, feeling the weight of the world on her shoulders. She knew she had to fix these issues, but with so many fires to put out, she couldn't see a way out of the chaos. That's when a colleague walked into her office, holding a book with the title, Fix This Next, emblazoned on the cover. Intrigued, Sarah listened as her colleague explained the four-step method that could help them identify which business problems to tackle first. As she flipped through the pages, Sarah was surprised to find that the book used unexpected examples to illustrate its points. A jammed printer could teach her about running a business? Sarah had to admit, she was skeptical. But as she read on, she discovered the unconventional wisdom behind the Fix This Next method. Suddenly, Sarah felt a glimmer of hope. Maybe there was a way to end the firefighting and put her business on the path to sustainability. With a renewed sense of purpose, Sarah dove into the book, eager to learn more. Little did she know, the Fix This Next analysis was about to change the course of her business and her life forever. Chapter 1. Once upon a time, there was a young entrepreneur named Lisa. She had a passion for creating beautiful jewelry and dreamed of one day owning her own jewelry business. Finally, after years of hard work and saving up money, Lisa was able to make her dream a reality. At first, Lisa was over the moon with excitement. She was creating beautiful pieces of jewelry, and people loved them. Sales were starting to pick up, and Lisa thought everything was going great. However, as time went on, Lisa started to notice a problem. Despite all her hard work and sales, her business just wasn't making enough profit. Like Mike Michalovic, Lisa started to feel the pressure of the debt that was piling up. She had taken out loans to fund her business and was struggling to keep up with the repayments. Her stress levels were rising, and she was starting to feel like she was in crisis mode. Lisa's first instinct was to work even harder, create more pieces of jewelry, and increase her sales. She thought that if she could just sell more, she could pull herself out of debt. However, the more she sold, the more debt she seemed to accumulate. It was clear that her approach wasn't working. One day, Lisa was working on a particularly intricate piece of jewelry when her tools suddenly stopped working. She tried everything she could think of to fix them, but nothing was working. She was getting more and more frustrated until she finally took a step back and took a deep breath. It was then that Lisa realized that her instinctual approach to fixing things wasn't working. Just like with her jewelry tools, her gut instincts for her business weren't leading her in the right direction. She needed to be more strategic and find a different approach. Lisa turned to the Fix This Next tool and began working systematically through her business needs. She realized that her biggest problem wasn't her sales, it was her lack of profitability. She needed to find a way to increase her profits and reduce her debt. With this new approach, Lisa started to make changes to her business. She focused on creating more high-end pieces of jewelry that would increase her profit margins. She also started to look for ways to cut costs and reduce her debt. It wasn't easy, but Lisa was determined to succeed. Over time, Lisa's business started to thrive. Her profits increased and her debt decreased. She was able to pay off her loans and even hire some new employees to help with her growing business. Lisa had learned that sometimes, you need to stop following your gut and be more strategic to get out of crisis mode. Chapter 2. Mike Michalovic, a struggling business owner, found himself in crisis mode. His business was drowning in debt, and despite increasing sales, his profits remained stagnant. To make matters worse, he was personally in debt for over $365,000. One day, his printer jammed, and in a fit of frustration, he aggressively tried to fix it. After five unsuccessful attempts, he took a step back and realized that his gut instinct wasn't working. 
He examined the printer more calmly and found a scrap of paper stuck in the feed. This experience made him question his approach to his business. His instincts had told him to focus on increasing sales, but this wasn't reducing his debt. He needed to focus on increasing profitability instead. Many business owners fall into the same trap as Michaelovic, not realizing what their biggest business problem is. They try to solve all their issues at once instead of being strategic and prioritizing their decisions around clear business needs. This instinctual behavior rarely moves a business forward and instead leaves them stuck in a survival trap. To overcome this, Michaelovic recommends following the business hierarchy of needs, which is similar to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. The base of the pyramid is sales, followed by profit, order, impact, and legacy. By understanding this hierarchy and addressing each level's needs, businesses can make more effective decisions and avoid crisis mode. Chapter 3. You are the owner of a small business that provides marketing services to other businesses. Despite your best efforts, you're struggling to keep your company afloat. You're constantly putting out fires, from dealing with unhappy clients to trying to find new customers. You're working long hours, sacrificing time with your family and friends, but it doesn't seem to be making much of a difference. One day, you realize that you need to find and fix your biggest business problem if you want to move forward. You remember the analogy of the chain and decide to apply it to your business. You realize that your business is like a chain, and if one link breaks, the whole thing falls apart. So, you decide to identify your vital need, the most foundational need that must be addressed before it can support the needs above it. Using the Fix This Next 4-Step Method, you take 15 minutes to evaluate your business's hierarchy of needs. You realize that you're not making enough sales to cover your expenses, which is preventing you from generating a profit. This means that sales is your vital need. You need to focus on improving your sales so that you can generate the profit you need to sustain your business. You establish a measurable solution for the problem, to convert four potential clients into sales each month. You make a plan to target potential clients, reach out to them, and offer your services. You set a goal for yourself and your team, and you start working on it. Over the next few weeks, you focus on improving your sales. You start seeing results. You're converting more potential clients into sales, and you're generating more revenue. With this extra cash flow, you're able to pay off some of your debts and start building a profitable business. You continue to use the Fix This Next 4-Step method to identify and fix your weakest links. You find that as you strengthen each link in your chain, your business becomes more sustainable. You're able to provide better service to your clients, and you're no longer constantly in crisis mode. In the end, by focusing on your vital need and systematically addressing your weaknesses, you're able to move your business forward and build a successful company that provides value to your clients and sustains your lifestyle. Chapter 4. Meet Jane, a young and ambitious entrepreneur who has always dreamed of starting her own business. After years of planning and saving, she finally launched her e-commerce store, selling handmade jewelry. Jane was passionate about her products and had a strong vision for her brand. She poured all her energy into marketing and promoting her business, and soon enough, orders started pouring in. Jane was thrilled. It seemed like her business was taking off. But as the orders increased, so did the expenses. Jane found herself constantly taking out loans to cover costs like payroll and materials. She started to realize that even though she was making sales, she wasn't actually making enough money to sustain her business. One day, Jane attended a business conference where she learned about the business hierarchy of needs. She realized that she had been neglecting the foundational layer of the pyramid, sales. Jane came to understand that sales were more than just the number of orders she received. She needed to make sure she was delivering on her commitments and promises to her customers. She also needed to ensure that her customers were paying her on time and in full. Jane immediately set to work on improving her sales strategy. She created a payment plan for her customers, which gave them the option to pay in installments. She also made sure to clearly communicate her payment terms to avoid any confusion. As a result, Jane started receiving more payments on time, and her business became more stable. 
she was finally able to pay herself a salary and cover her basic needs. Jane learned that bringing in sufficient cash creates a solid business foundation. Without it, her business would have been built on quicksand, and she would have been constantly struggling to keep it afloat. Now, Jane continues to focus on improving her sales strategy and strengthening the foundational layer of her business. She knows that by doing so, she can ensure her business thrives and grows sustainably. Chapter 5. It was a typical Tuesday morning, and Michael was sitting at his desk, surrounded by stacks of invoices and receipts. He had always dreamed of owning his own business, and now that he finally did, he found himself constantly worried about money. No matter how much he brought in, it seemed like there was never enough. As he sat there staring at the piles of paperwork, he couldn't help but think that there had to be a better way. He knew that he needed to reframe his thinking about profit if he wanted his business to be successful and sustainable in the long run. Michael began to do some research and came across the business hierarchy of needs. As he read through it, he realized that he had been so focused on reinvesting every penny back into the business that he had neglected the importance of profit. He decided to make a change. Instead of putting all his money back into the business, he calculated a reasonable percentage of profit to put aside. This money would be used to wipe out debt and create cash reserves to cover all expenses for three months. At first, it was difficult for Michael to adjust his mindset. He had always been so focused on growth that it was hard to let go of the idea of reinvesting every penny back into the business. But as he began to see the benefits of having a financial buffer, he realized that he had been doing it wrong all along. With his newfound focus on profit, Michael was able to shift out of survival mode and into a state of permanent profitability. He was no longer constantly worried about money, and he had the financial stability to scale his business without being overwhelmed by debt. As he looked around his office, Michael couldn't help but feel proud of what he had accomplished. He had taken his business from a place of uncertainty to a state of financial security. And it was all because he had reframed his thinking about profit. Chapter 6. As a young entrepreneur, Alex had always dreamed of running his own business. And after years of hard work, he finally achieved his goal. Alex was now the proud owner of a successful marketing agency, and his team was growing every day. However, with more employees came more responsibilities, and Alex was starting to feel the pressure. He found himself constantly dealing with small issues that should have been easily resolved. One day, after dealing with yet another problem, Alex realized that he needed to create order in his business. He couldn't keep putting out fires and expect his business to grow. He needed a system that would support autonomy. Alex decided to take inspiration from the human body. Our bodies are constantly fighting off cancerous cells, and it's only when they fail to do so that we become ill. Alex realized that his business was experiencing the same challenge. He needed to create a system that would identify issues before they became unruly. Alex began by identifying the processes and routines that were already in place within his business. He realized that his accounts department, for example, followed a series of steps to issue an invoice. If more than one employee had this knowledge, his business wasn't at risk of losing money if that employee was away. Alex then encouraged his team to document their work processes and store the information somewhere accessible. This way, if someone was absent, another employee could step in and follow their processes to get the work done. Alex also identified the more critical roles in his business, such as his own, and created systems around their work. With these systems in place, Alex's business began to operate more autonomously. He no longer found himself dealing with small issues and was able to focus on growing his business. And, as a bonus, Alex was finally able to take that coveted month off every year to follow his other dreams. In the end, Alex realized that creating order in his business was crucial to its success. By designing systems that supported autonomy, he was able to ensure that his business could run smoothly, even in his absence. Chapter 7. In the small town of Freedom, Minnesota, there was a restaurant called The Lost Kitchen that had people from all over the world sending postcards just for the chance to book a table. The owner, Aaron French, had created a unique booking system that made the experience more personal and intimate for her customers. 
It all started when the restaurant gained international acclaim, and the staff were overwhelmed with booking requests. Erin saw this as an opportunity to create something more meaningful, so she implemented the postcard system. Each year, during the first 10 days of April, people could send in postcards, and the lucky few would be invited to dine at the restaurant throughout the year. As a result, the staff started putting the postcards on display each night while preparing for dinner service. This simple act created a connection between the staff and their guests, making the experience more personal and memorable. It was a transformative moment that made the lost kitchen more than just a place to eat, it became an experience. This transformation was the result of the impact the lost kitchen had on its customers. It was no longer just a transactional experience of eating food but an emotional one of creating memories. The restaurant's mission was to provide farm-to-table dining with a personal touch, and that's exactly what it did. As a result, customers became brand ambassadors, spreading the word about their amazing experience at the Lost Kitchen. This impact also extended to the staff, who were motivated by the power of the restaurant's mission. They became brand ambassadors too, embodying the company's values and creating a unique and transformative experience for their customers. In conclusion, Businesses can create a significant impact by evolving from the purely transactional to the transformative. By providing a unique and personal experience that goes beyond the transactional exchange of goods or services, businesses can create a lasting impact on their customers and employees. The Lost Kitchen is an excellent example of how a small restaurant in a small town can have a significant impact by providing a transformative experience. Chapter 8. In the small town of Millfield, Ohio. There was a restaurant called the Millfield Grill. The restaurant had been in the same family for generations and was known for its home-style cooking and warm atmosphere. The current owner, a woman named Sarah, had inherited the restaurant from her father and had been running it for over 30 years. Sarah had always loved the restaurant, but as she approached retirement age, she began to worry about what would happen to it when she was no longer there to run it. She didn't want to sell it to a stranger or see it go out of business. She wanted the legacy of the Millfield Grill to continue for generations to come. She started to think about what she could do to ensure the restaurant's future. She had loyal customers, but she needed to create something that would make the restaurant stand out and create a community of fans that would ensure its success for years to come. Sarah decided to focus on creating an experience for her customers. She wanted them to feel like they were part of the restaurant's family, and she wanted to give them a reason to come back again and again. She started by creating a loyalty program that rewarded customers for their continued patronage. Next, she decided to revamp the menu, adding some new dishes that were inspired by her travels around the world. She also started to source all of her ingredients from local farms and vendors, giving customers a true farm-to-table experience. But Sarah's biggest idea was to create a community around the restaurant. She started to host events like trivia nights and live music performances. She also created a Facebook group for the restaurant, where customers could share their favorite dishes, photos, and stories. As a result, the Millfield Grill became more than just a restaurant. It became a gathering place for the community. People would come in just to chat with Sarah or catch up with their neighbors over a plate of fried chicken or a slice of pie. When Sarah finally retired, she was able to pass the restaurant down to her daughter with confidence. She knew that her legacy would live on because she had created a community of loyal fans who would keep coming back year after year. The Millfield Grill was no longer just a restaurant, it was a beloved institution that would continue to thrive for generations to come. Finally, the insights and knowledge I gained from reading, Fix This Next, were phenomenal. I highly recommend it. Thank you for taking the time to watch, and if you found value in this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more great content. Trust me, you won't regret it.